and uh, to my congratulations to Sudipto and uh, Vipul uh, for making this film uh, and for uh, to Ken Nas, uh, gratitude for distributing it for a global audience so people like me can see it. I haven't seen it yet, but I definitely intend to see it. And I intend to take a lot of friends along and talk about it because I think people should, should get out of their comfort zone and fear and political correctness. This kind of topic should be the new normal because this is the world we live in. We have to face the world. I mean, that is what uh, honesty is all about. So as I see it, based on uh, all the, well, the trailer and all the discussions and all the legal issues here and there, uh, I've, I've really done my homework uh, to the extent uh, I can without having seen the film. Uh, and my sense is that this is not a film uh, that is, uh, you know, a kind of a Hindu gripe per se. It's a film more about uh, traffic, uh, human trafficking, about women's issues. All the women's rights people should be should be involved in this discussion. Uh, the women's uh, feminist movements and women's movements in, in the United States, in the Western world, should see this as a film that actually uh, gives a voice to uh, the, the girls who've been victims. And this is the sort of discussion that they talk about in abstract. And they talk about, uh, you know, a case study here and a case study there. And that becomes a very big uh, a topic for a big PhD somewhere. Something happened in one part of the world. But look at the scale of this. The scale of this is unprecedented. The scale of this atrocity, the recency with which it is done, it is not a historical view of something that happened, you know, during some Nazi times and all that. Those are pretty bad but this happened now, it is still happening, okay? And, and the fact that it is sort of hushed up by a whole conspiracy of silence. There's a whole conspiracy of silence. And this is something very important to, uh, to confront. And so this uh, radicalization of Islam, to critique, critique it is not Islamophobia. Uh, Islamophobia, is because this is, uh, first of all, this is actual empirical facts. And if this fact happened to a person of religion X or Y or whatever, or people who don't have any faith, it would be still an atrocity. So I would say that uh, 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 the whole idea of uh, deceiving girls uh, on such a large scale, duping them into something, luring them, bringing them into a one-way street they can never get out of, uh, taking them to some other country, other place, which is alien to them, exploiting them in such inhuman ways, which people think would be medieval era or some old barbaric times, but this is happening today. I mean, this is so, such a huge story. I just cannot believe that uh, uh, there isn't even more excitement. I'm sure there will be even more excitement when it comes to uh, the Western world. And I'd like to certainly uh, make some provocative uh, uh, or, you know, discussions around this. I don't think people should silence this. I don't think the court should come and suppress free speech. I mean, if people disagree, then they can make their own film too, and many people do. If there are critics who want to uh, uh, you know, slander this film and talk negative about it, they should have a right to do so. so but I, I think the topic is too serious uh, for large scale affecting innocent people to be hushed up and to be slipped under the rug as something that you know, we better not talk about because somebody might find it offensive. Now, I will tell you, I have a lot of uh, liberal Muslim friends who I think will enjoy this film and support it. For instance, I just did a four-part uh, series of uh, discussions with uh, Asra Nomani, who's a Muslim uh, from India, a Wall Street Journal uh, journalist. Uh, she converted into anti-Islamic radicalism, did not leave Islam. She's a practicing Muslim but converted into fighting against the radical Islam when Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street Journal uh, uh, journalist, was killed in uh, Karachi by the Taliban. And she was the last person to see him. She was the last person other than the terrorist to see him. They were there together with his wife. So this whole thing she narrated and then how the, the radicalization of the mosques and all that. Uh, now, people like that, I uh, have to take this forward, and I'm sure they will. I'm going to meet her uh, this Sunday. She's bringing a whole delegation of uh, her uh, comrades, her, her people of her wavelength. So I think that uh, there will be many constituents wanting to support this movement, uh, not just Hindu people. 
and not just Indian people. Uh, there'll be Western people, uh, people who represent uh, human rights in Africa. Uh, so I would, uh, I, I, I would consider this also a topic of discussion in the religious freedom uh, uh, you know, circles. There are a lot of institutions that talk about religious freedom all the time, because this is a kind of uh, abuse of so-called freedom under the garb of practicing one's religion with freedom, uh, all this is going on. So one has to debate and discuss what are the limits to freedom. You know, you should have a freedom to practice. Should you also have a freedom to impose on other people and to kidnap them and rape them and dupe them, deceive them. Uh, uh, so I, I think that the whole boundary of religious freedom has to be renegotiated. It cannot just be unlimited because you're practicing something God told you and therefore there are no limits to what you can get away with. I don't think that that uh, that uh, withstands. So I would, uh, uh, and I also want to say that uh, uh, not taking a dig at Islam per se, but since that this topic happens to be, I, I want to be very clear, I'm a kafir because I'm not a believer. I'm a kafir according to their definition, a non-believer. So as a kafir, if I look at all the surahs that are written, particularly the ones in Mecca, and particularly the way they've been interpreted, that talk about kafirs in a certain way, that talk about what should happen to them, whether it is peaceful means or violent means or through taxation or through whatever means, uh, not very good things. So when I, when, as a kafir, they're talking about me, I have a right to be afraid of it. I have a right to talk back. I mean, why, why would I be accused of Islamophobia if all I'm doing is as somebody is being targeted, I just want to have a voice and speak, speak out. So this, is a, this film has a lot of courage. Uh, it, the, the people who put it together, I must say, uh, are doing a service to, for uh, human rights uh, and for freedom. Uh, and, and I would appeal to the, uh, the liberal-minded people that uh, rather than uh, you know, closing their minds because of political pressures and rather than saying, oh, you know, this is Islamophobic, don't rush to judgment. Uh, think about when you see it, reflect on it, think about what does, if you were one of those women, what, what would you think of if you are one of the mothers of these people, uh, if you are, have a sister like this, or even if you don't have a relative involved in this, you're just a human being. What would you, what do you, what are your emotions? Forget the politics of it. Forget the whether it's left wing, right wing uh, nonsense. Think of it as a human being. This is the this is how I see this as an opportunity for all of us human beings to uh, reflect, maybe learn uh, to be better people, uh, better respectful of other people's rights, respect those who are different from us. As long as it's mutual, uh, I respect you for who you are, provided you also respect me for who I am. So it cannot be a one-way street. And if your attitude is violent towards me, if your attitude is to sort of uh, you know, debunk me and dismantle me and try to get the better of me, I don't owe respect to you at all. So respect is not unconditional. We, we shouldn't think of unconditional respect because that is not ahimsa, that is encouraging himsa. Ahimsa means that you also have to do some, some active, you have to take action, including violent action to suppress somebody who may out may destroy thousands of lives so so if you have to take action against one assassin one murderer one terrorist who is about to kill a thousand people that is not that is actually allowed under the principles of ahimsa so i will uh, i could we could go on talking and one day we should talk more uh, but uh, this is limited time i don't want to hog all the time i want to thank all the all of you uh, for having me here, for giving me this opportunity.